Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dividends, the show for and about your college of business. Great show today. We're going to jump right in with our first guest, Madison Kate Dyer. And uh, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. You are from northern part of the state? Yes, I'm from Pontotoc, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a large produce farm. A large produce? What mm -hmm. kind of stuff did you grow? Um, they grow tomatoes as our main um, produce. We had a bunch of other stuff like corn. Mm -hmm. We do um, cotton and things like that. But we're mostly known for our seasonal corn maize and pumpkin patch. All right. So what made you decide to uh, come to Mississippi State? Um, well, I have a few family members that are engineers and I knew I needed to do something with math. So um, I had a lot of people encourage me to apply to be in the Bagley College of Engineering. I got in and decided that that's what I was going to do. What engineering discipline? I am in electrical engineering. Which makes no sense, I guess, when we talk about <laughs> the project you have going on through the East no. Center. Tell folks all about Street Beets. Okay, so Street Beets, um, we use sugar beet juice to reduce the formation of ice on unwanted surfaces. And a sugar beet is a vegetable grown in the north. Where did you come up with this idea? So I've been holding on to this idea for about six years. And I came up with this idea when I was in high school after watching like Ice Road Truckers and my family that lives in Alaska and they had mentioned it to me before they use sugar beet juice on their tires. I was like, this could be a really cool idea to use here. But I was like, no, this would never work. So I came to Mississippi State freshman year. I told a few people about it. They were like, no, this isn't going to work. And then during spring break this year, I was like, you know, I should actually probably do something about this before I graduate. And a few mm -hmm. of my friends told me about the E-Center. Um, I went in, told my idea, and here we are. So tell me about the process now. You say you take sugar beets, mm -hmm. uh, which I understand are grown primarily up north, but you can right. grow them in Mississippi. Yes, you can grow them here. Um, so first, obviously, you would grow the beets or you purchase beets from up north and then you would juice them in a juicer. I have a little juicer we're working with getting into Mississippi State's like the large juicer. And um, you can use preservatives, use other things in the juice, but it's basically just the juice that melts ice or prevents ice. All right, so how is it applied? You can use sprayers. Um, I used a little spray bottle for my windshield that made all the ice go away after it had been frosted over. Um, but so how long does it take? You come out and your window's frosted, right. you spray it on there, does it just start melting? Yeah, pretty much. It, like I just sprayed it on there. It took maybe a minute or two. My car hadn't even gotten started yet. And I was like, well, I can get in my car and go. I don't even have to wait. Who are your customers going to be? Do you see this as, like you say, the, a mm -hmm. consumer that keep it in their car? Uh, but are you looking to bigger applications? I think we're looking right now to do bigger applications. I currently plan on working with like medium-sized companies, so like trucking companies, airports, um, schools, apartments, to put it on like the driveways or the loading docks, the walkways to keep ice off there. And the advantage is over, I guess, salt? Mm-hmm. So, Sugar beet juice is very economically friendly, where salt can cause like bacteria, it can cause harm to your animals, it rusts your vehicles, that's a big thing. Um, and sugar beet juice doesn't do any of that. So like you could feed it to your dog and he would be okay. And you also the byproducts from juicing you can use for cattle feed, so there's yes. some use for that so as well. so the leftovers, can, like the pulp, um, can be dried and sent to cattle feed companies because wow. they feed it to cattle and deer and things of that sort. So how has the uh, E-Center helped you bring this to your idea to life? The E-Center has helped me a lot. It got me really started. I had a lot, got a lot more connections through the E-Center. I got to meet with some mentors um, and they really helped me push for my company. I didn't know how to start it personally, so like going to the E-Center gave me the extra push I needed to start my company and continue with my company and not give up. And how do you balance all this? You're, you're an engineering student, difficult. Right. You're head of the um, Women in Engineering. Is that I correct? am treasurer of Women in Engineering. And you're starting a business. Um, time management's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Some weeks I don't think I can handle it, but 
it just all works out. Well, we uh, are very proud of what you're doing. It is a fascinating idea and wish you a lot of uh, success and, and good luck with it and appreciate you coming on and sharing that with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. We're going to take a break. We will be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us. The Entrepreneurship Center exists to give innovators here at Mississippi State an edge. Our goal is to provide startups with the resources and support they need to reach the marketplace and ultimately achieve success. Success for us was growing our company from two founders to eight employees. Success for me was turning my personal lifestyle into a corporate partnership. Success for us is turning academic research into applied engineering solutions. Success for me was turning my passion into a profitable opportunity. The success of our entrepreneurs is a team effort. It takes a strong support infrastructure of people to encourage innovation and explore new ventures. We need business leaders to mentor and guide these visionaries through the practical challenges and do everything we can to give them a shot at real success. Here, there's a spirit that makes people move a little differently. We're the all-nighters, crime fighters, and rocket igniters. The adventure seekers, record breakers, and noise makers. We innovate, lead, we inspire. We're family, bound by a common bond that's changing the world. Mississippi State University, where we ring true. Imagine the next big idea from the next generation of business leaders. We are at Mississippi State University, where we ring true. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me now, uh, no stranger to dividends. How many times have you been on here, Michael? I believe this will be my fourth time. So this is Michael Lane. Uh, Michael has graduated, but he was on as a student, one of our entrepreneurs, and then he graduated, and uh, we thought so much of him. Uh, he is now the director of the Idea Shop. Is that the right title, or Grand Poobah? What's the title? Uh, so we're, uh, I'm the program coordinator for the Idea Shop. And you are busy. You know, when we opened the idea shop, we weren't sure how folks would respond to this concept of a public space to come make things and do things. And uh, give us an update. It has grown beyond all of our expectations. Oh, yeah. So we're busting at the seams. We have currently 20 to 25 vendors in our retail product accelerator. We're sitting around 100 members in the back <laughs> maker studio section of the space. We probably run four to 5,000 hours of 3D prints through since we opened. We have about 400 prints waiting in the queue, plus about 10 to 20 custom orders and prototype uh, so that we're working on for customers. I guess we should back up a little bit. If you aren't familiar with an idea shop, it's a, a makerspace, and if you aren't familiar with that, Michael, can you give them a? Yeah, so makerspaces are basically collaborative lab spaces that people can come in and use our equipment to build their own projects. And for the general public, it's kind of like a gym membership because some of the equipment, the 3D printing equipment, the woodworking equipment, is expensive. So uh, if, if you're hampered by not having the funds to do it, you buy a membership to the Idea Shop, 25 bucks a month, right? That is correct. And you can come in and have access to all these great creative tools. And the public has uh, embraced it actually a, a good bit more than I had anticipated. Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, community involvement in the space, um, and we want to keep continuing that on as we move forward. Yeah, working with kids, I know mm -hmm. we want to do some kind of STEM-related stuff where you can come in and you make the little robots out of toothbrushes. That's yeah. one of the our little our little brush bots. It's one of our favorite projects to go through with kids. So we also uh, think that it's important for the Idea Shop to be a part of the community. And every year in Starkville, they have the Pumpkin Palooza. So uh, some some goofy guy came up with the idea of uh, pumpkin races. Yeah, I think it's the one sitting across from me. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, this last time for Pumpkin Palooza, we decided we'd do pumpkin races, which is basically we took pumpkins and turned them into soapbox derby cars. And that's a picture of one that uh, one of our members started to create. And there they are with the wheels as we're getting them uh, 
getting them ready for the big race. The, the premise here is that uh, businesses or individuals gave us $100, and we gave 50 of that to the charity of their choice, and then we, the rest went into the kits, and then look at the crowd downtown for the pumpkin race. Well, it's for Pumpkin Palooza, but they came, uh, lined up for the big races, and then we built a ramp. There's all our sponsors on there. Looks like I'm wearing a prison shirt, uh, but at any rate, the mayor has uh, helped us launch it, and there they go. Yeah, it, was, it turned out into a fantastic event. Like, we couldn't, the rows outside the racetrack were five deep, couldn't even get up to it. It was really, really fun. We learned a few things. Uh, we're going to tweak it for next year. I think, I think we're decided we're, instead of the low profile tires, going to go with a little bigger. Yep. Make them a little bigger. Those, uh, those little tires made it interesting when they were coming down the ramps. We had quite a, quite a bit of mayhem. <laughs> There's pumpkin, pumpkin carnage uh, up and down Main Street. And the winner, tell them what the winner got. Oh yeah, so we, for the winner, we created a custom uh, pumpkin, wooden pumpkin trophy for them to get. So we've been down there uh, about a year now, give or take, and already you're looking, uh, you're looking at an expansion. What, what ne what's next for the idea shop? So on our next agenda is to expand our capacity. So 3D printing, uh, project space, metalworking, ceramics, those kind of things. And there's been a lot of talk also about the cottage food industry and that perhaps the idea shop could play a role in some kind of commercial kitchen because uh, when you're dealing with food, you have to hit certain health standards, right? We do. Um, and that is something we'd like to get into in the future as well. All right. Um, what would you say have been some of the most fun things you have done, you personally, that you've been involved with? So one of my favorite events we've done was the rocket, bottle rocket event we hosted for uh, 9 through 14, I think was the age group. But it was really cool. They got to come in, decorate bottles in the space and go out the next day and shoot them. We were shooting bottle rockets right, well, too. Now tell us water. Us, yeah, okay, tell us the science bottles. behind that. We're not actually out there throwing uh, yeah, so rockets down Main Street. Basically the process, you uh, take two liter bottles, put a little bit of water in it and then pressurize them with air. And that call, once you release it, it causes them to shoot up in the air. That's it? It's just air and water? That's Air it. and water. Mm -hmm. And you did these uh, at the Cadence Bank Plaza? Yeah, the, we did it in their back parking lot. So how much, how much lift did you get? How high did they go? So we had some go around 150 to 200 feet in the air. Wow. All right, so uh, if you are in Starkville or come for a visit or come for a ball game, uh, the Idea Shop is right, uh, right on Main Street by Moe's Barbecue, and uh, we invite you to stop by. It really has added a lot of, uh, you know, it's created some traffic downtown too as well and, and got folks moving, and that's something we want to do as a land grant as well as to, uh, have some economic churn and give back to the community. So Michael, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate all that you do and like having you as a regular here on Dividends. Oh, thanks for having me back. That's gonna do it for us folks. Uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.